Yeah, so my name is Silent Tsikiti. Silent is shh, right? That's easy to, to get. And uh, I'm a data scientist. I'll be joining Musen in February. So let's get into this. So first of all, I would like to ask something. Uh, how, many do you, how many people here think AI or machine learning or deep learning can reduce cyber attacks? Very few. And for the others? No. OK, cool. So these are some uh, type, types of AI cybersecurity solutions that are being implemented at the moment. Spam filter applications, network intruder detection, and prevention as well. Fraud detection, uh, credit scoring, and next best offers, botnet detection, secure user authentication, cyber security ratings, hacking in inside, forecasting. Right. Let me start by explaining what AI is. So basically, AI is the programming systems to perform tasks which usually require human intelligence. And uh, just uh, to surprise you, AI started back in 1956, right, by a guy called John Mackey. Mackey. And uh, this guy, when he started, it actually try, he was trying to, he started with a chess game, right? So he trained a chess game to, to play chess better than him, and it ended up ended up outsmarting him and he played, he actually AI played better than, than him. <coughs> and um, AI and is, is just a science and technology based on disciplines such as computer science, engineering and a bit of psychology as well. Um, so what is our main goal here for of uh, artificial intelligence in a cyber security or infosec conference? Um, I, my background is in data science. I don't know much about cyber security, but I know a bit. And um, I'm sure if we combine the two, we can reduce a lot of cyber security attacks that are happening. And this is not only based on research, but this has been implemented to detect, to prevent, or even to, only, not only to detect and prevent, but many things that can be applied as well. Uh, machine learning, how many have heard of machine learning or have implemented machine learning so far? Very few. It's actually a buzzword. Many companies uh, are now using AI and many security vendors are using AI as well and uh, machine learning, right? But many are migrating to deep learning, right? Which is something that I'm going to talk about. So what is machine learning? It's actually training an algorithm to solve tasks by pattern recognition instead of specifically programming them, then how to use the task. So with machine learning, it's basically, yeah, basically, it's more like, how I many of you have good kids? I'm sure many. <laughs> but uh, with machine learning, it's more like training a kid so many times. But this is this, this is this, and this is this. Then it ends up like learning from that training, right? So. And what is deep learning? Deep learning is training algorithms to use deep neural networks with multiple layers, right? So these are the four types of machine learning algorithms that you can use. Deep learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. All right. So I spoke about this. It's a... Uh, so with, I'm going to speak more on machine learning. And uh, machine learning, as you can see, it's, there's this guy called Samuels. It was 19, 1959, described machine learning as a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly, explicitly programmed, right? And machine learning is a set of algorithms that automatically detects patterns in data, estimates them function, that describes the relationship between the future set and the target variable and uses uncovered patterns to predict the data. When Samuel gave this definition after he wrote a checkers, which is the game that I was talking about, playing, pro, playing program, the algorithm learned over time.
Uh, okay, so with Samuel, Samuel gave, uh, sorry about that. Samuel gave the definition after he wrote, he wrote a checkers playing program uh, and the algorithm learned over time what constituted bad boards positions and good board positions and eventually the machine became better at playing checkers than Samuel. That was back in what? 1959. So those who think ML is a new thing, it's not a new thing. So what is the pro uh, machine learning process? So I'm a big believer when it comes to machine learning, you need to know to have the domain knowledge, right? That's the first thing you need to know if you are in the cyber security or if you're a hacker, you really need to you know stuff before you get into to anything. So the first, the first thing that you need to know is to understand or identify project objectives, right? Not only that, understand the, the terminology and everything in that industry, which is data understanding as well, collecting and review data, data preparation, select and cleanse data, modeling, which is a big part in the machine learning process, manipulate data and draw conclusions, evaluation, evaluate model and conclusions, and deploying. This is quite a significant part. This can be a bit dangerous and as well good at the same time. The reason being that we, most models that we're running now are running on real-time uh, real run or data, uh, oh sorry, real-time, yeah, sorry. And a lot of people, I get this a lot, and this is quite a big thing now. Many people don't understand what deep learning, the difference between deep learning and machine learning, right? And uh, if you look at the, the, the graph, the picture here, you can see that that is our input, right? And above, it's machine learning, right? So with machine learning, above there, we are going to do feature engineering, which includes feature encoding and all these other stuff. And uh, you get to figure out the features, then there's a classifier with shallow structure, and you get your output. But with deep learning, it has come and it, uh, it's outsmarting ML. Though, don't get me wrong, mach deep learning is part of machine learning, right? So it's, it combines um, supervised methods and unsupervised methods, right? So as you can see, this is a feature learning and classifier end-to-end -end learning. Both are combined when it comes to deep learning. <coughs> and you get your output out of that. So this is our machine learning. So with machine learning, mostly, we, I think most of you who have applied it, and many people who even if have applied it, they know most about supervised learning and unsupervised learning, classification, regression, and, and clustering. OK. So what is unsupervised or supervised learning? With supervised learning, you are expecting the results. The expected results is provided. Algorithm is trained to produce correct results, right? New data cl is classified according to the trend as so. well. And no results expected. Algorithm is trained so that similar data, right? That is the unsupervised now. As you can see, the similar data is, is, is combined. And with the supervised, it's, it's just splashed out, right? And uh, there's this semi semi unsupervised as well, which is something that I didn't mention because many, many of the folks and many, many guys are not using it. <coughs> right. So how can we reduce the cyber attacks? I think we all know that many of these attacks are actually for financial benefits. And we can check with the... Uh, Many, many, many of the, the guys now, we are using it for anomaly detection, right? So in the, maybe in the context of network and what security anomaly detection refers to identifying expected intruders or breaches, right? And uh, whether the nature of the attack or data infiltration or exploitation through, through ransomware or hardware or advanced persistent threats, it is clear that time is not on the defender's right. The 2019 bridge investigations reported that and stated that um, on average it takes 10 days, only 10 days, for a systems bridge to be detected. 
But after an attack gains entry, however, the damage is usually done in a few days less, which is quite crazy. Right, so I'm going to get into your stuff now, which is, uh, and further explain, the DDoS attack, denial of service attack, <coughs> as you can see, it has increased by 200% in the first quarter of 2019 compared <coughs> to the same period last year. What is the goal of uh, DDoS? The, the goal is to disrupt or delay the service, the services or server or network. Attackers want to reign in everyone's parade by making services and systems unresponsible or unavailable to end users, which is quite sad. They do this by exhausting those uh, components, resources, it can be bandwidth, disk space, memory, but their aim, main aim is to prevent the systems from operating as intended. Right. We can see from this as well that it's quite growing at a very, as you can see from, 90, from, from 1998, when there's actually a report that came a few days back, and it's, it's crazy how, how these attacks are growing, the DDoS attacks as well, right. Okay, so what are the methods uh, being used currently, right? Intrusion detection systems, we use thresholds, heuristics, and uh, simple statistical profiles to detect intrusion. Right, but uh, what, are, what are the limitations or the threshold based on normally detection logic is uh, used to implement some questions re quickly raised? How do we set the thresholds? It's a good question. Could some users require a higher threshold than others? Could there be times when users legitimately need to access the database more often. How frequent do we need to update the threshold? Could an attack, an, an attacker infiltrated data? Okay, so I think there is a solution for that. And uh, it's called time series, right? So with time series, we've got the seasonal variations, we've got the trend variations, We've got cyclic, uh, cyclical variations and random va variations. With seasonal variations, that uh, is something that repeats over a specific period, such as uh, maybe a day, a week, month, a year, right? And for example, if it's a website, you know that around this time, and we, we, we recently had a Black Friday, and many, many of the sites just had problems and problems and problems, and I think those guys are not even using, they're not applying time, I mean, time series as well. Because if you get to configure your, your, your website according to what happened last year around that same time, that very day and that very hour, you can implement time series as well and it will do wonders. Uh, trend variations that move up and down in reasonably predictable patterns, right? And if, you, you, you can check how, how, how it is being implemented. Obviously, it's first thing is to clean, and which is a big part in, the term, uh, in, in any machine learning model or AI. The cleaning, cleaning of data is quite crazy. Uh, time, time series visualization, you want to check. You want to check what's happening with the, uh, the data set that you have, remove none, switch or seasonal, and all that. Uh, train and evaluate. Optimally optimize, sorry, optimally optimize machine learning model and deployment, right? Um, so what does time series algorithm do? It learns from prior data and make a prediction about the future, substantial um, deviations between the forecast and observations and are considered, right? This class of anomaly detection, right? This class of anomaly detection algorithm uses past data to predict uh, current data and measures how different the, the current and currently observed data is from the prediction. In the focus, 
following factors are, are considered, which is the trends. And if you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you look at my graph there, the black, I don't know if, yeah, the black part, right, uh, let's put it in a 12 months gap. That, if it was, that was a 12 months and the next year, the, the following year, it's quite above or beyond and you've got more traffic, for example, if it's a website, then that it, uh, with machine learning, you can train it and it doesn't recognize it as, as an abnormal traffic. It, re it requires that it, it recognizes that it as a normal traffic. But if uh, the scary thing is, uh, what if it's a DDoS, right? And I'll, I'll get to talk about that as well. So we can observe clearly period in the, in the, in the, in the pattern in this series. To perform anomaly detection using forecasting, we compare the observed data points with a rolling prediction made uh, periodically. Let me give an example. Um, and an, an anomaly occurs if the observed values for between uh, within low confidence bands and an anomaly alert is are raised, right? So the blue the blue line there, right? It's actually a 12 months uh, analyzed 12 months back, and it is it was already modeled, right? So we already modeled it, trained trained our data, and the orange line now gives the focus for the next year coming year, right? So what are the advantages of time series? Uh, the time series pattern recognition systems lens the season now. Patterns in the data sense is able to correctly identify as anomaly. Seasonality is the tendency of data to show regular patterns due to natural cycles of user activity. For example, <coughs> I'm going to give uh, we, we, we get to see higher traffic on weekends or weekdays compared to, sorry, on weekdays compared to weekends, whereas other sites see opposite trend, right? Some seasonal trends play out over longer periods. Online shopping websites exp ex expect a spike in traffic every year and during the peak shopping seasons, so it's quite an advantage to use time series. Right, on, on websites specifically. If the training data contains, so what are the disadvantages now? Or the limitations? If the, train, the training data contains anomalies that you cannot easily filter out, the model will fit to both inliers and outliers, which will make it difficult to detect future outliers. If the time series is highly erratic and does not follow an observable trend, or if the amplitude of functionality varies widely, forecasting is not likely to perform well. Right. I don't know. Do you agree? Okay. So let's move on to fishing. Right. This has been a big thing. If you are, and I, I'm, I'm sure most of you are older than me. And... Uh, for some, we started, using <laughs> we started using Gmail. I don't know if you ever received an email from <coughs> any guy just stating that you've got uh, one million runs that is, or one million US dollars in Canada that is waiting to, to be picked up and all that. So back in the days, you could get it in your inbox. But I'm sure if, you, if, uh, if one of you or many of you uses Gmail, you get to see that it's now classified as spam. And sometimes they, you don't even get the email. Right, and the reason being they're using machine learning behind, behind any, actually they're using machine learning algorithms behind that, and they can easily classify that this is an inbox, this is a social, or this is a promotion, and kind of that kind of thing. And you can even implement it as well on your, on your, with your emails, right? So the fake emails appear to the recipient as someone you did trust, such as a boss, right, or a bank. And the bad thing that uh, is happening now is that these guys can even now use your, your domain, your website domain, which is quite crazy. And uh, they can actually use uh, your brand identity as well, 
right? And fake to be maybe your manager, your boss, or, or anyone else. So features are getting quite crazy, but there is a re reduction. There is, I mean, they, they, it's now one out of 99, 99 is an, is an actually an email attack, so it, there is, it's being reduced. And there's actually a study that, uh, that I was looking at that uh, that's quite crazy, and you get to see how, as human beings, are, how curious we are. So they send out emails after a training. They told them, you must never open um, a bad email, right? And I'm sure many of us can figure out. Sometimes we try to figure out, right? But out of curiosity, about 40% downloaded, actually opened the email and downloaded the package. So how can we reduce that and how can we prevent that? So classification is, is the solution, right? A lot of classification models can be used and uh, many of us have had logistic regression, decision trees, support vector machines, neural network as well. Classification of network traffic can be effectively done by analyzing past events consisting of historical lines or, or logs of binary files, login attempts, emails received or inbound and outbound requests, learning patterns from, those, from these events and hence creating classification models that can classify future events whether malicious or legitimate. Right, so this is a linear regression and uh, logistic regression. These are two, are the two most famous uh, machine learning algorithms which, which come under supervised techniques as well. And the linear regression is, uh, is used for solving problems whereas logistic regression is used for solving classification problems. And we can see the difference here of linear regression. It's actually linear regression is used to predict the continuous dependent variable using a given set of independent variables. But with uh, logistic regression, it is used to predict the categorical dependent variable using a given set of independent variables. Linear regression is used to solve regression problems. And with logistic regression, it is used to solve classification problems. Okay. This is a, a decision tree, right? So with the decision tree, it is just a, a structure that, um, that it leaves, uh, that is leaves and represents classification and branches, right? Uh, there are advantages and limitations for, to, to this as well. The advantage, I don't actually recommend using decision trees mostly because of uh, deep learning that came out. Actually, it came out a few years back, but uh, there, there are some advantages and out of it. And, but with that, the advantages, uh, you get high classification accuracy and simple implementation as well. It's actually simple to implement. And uh, the limitations are decision trees perform grid search of best split on each node, right? And no, it, it does not fit continuous uh, variables. And the other biggest issue is the overfitting part of it. Actually, overfitting is the mo one of the most practical difficult for decision tree models. And the pro this problem gets solved by applying or, or actually constraints of uh, perimeters and, and pruning, right? Okay. Uh, but actually, there the, the is something. Uh, fortunately, we can use uh, we can use actually we can use um, deep learning, which is uh, which is something that I will talk about as well. So, what are the cyber security checkpoints? Checkpoints. In the cyber cyber solution system, security system, how should you be able to decide the following? For every file sent through the network, does it contain mail? These are the questions that you can ask yourself as well. For, for every login attempt, 
Because with, with machine learning and AI, it's all about data, and data is the big thing with us. And it's, for you to do any ML or the deep learning or AI stuff, we, data is the engine of it. And it all begins by asking yourself questions. Where do, we, where do we get the data from? What are the problems? And how do we then get to use it in the near future? Right, so for every login attempt, is someone's password been compromised? And how was it compromised? Those are the questions that you can ask yourself as, as your workplaces and all, and all that. So for every request to your servers, is it a denial service attack? Or is it a man in the middle or whatever it is? All these, are, all these tasks are classifiers of, of all events and whether malicious or legitimate, right? So, which brings us to this. And it's quite said that uh, malware attacks in South Africa increased by 22% in the first quarter of 2019 compared to the first quarter of 2018. So malware is just a blanket term for uh, worms, trojans, and other harmful computer programs egged hackers um, used to, 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 to rig distractions and gain access to sensitive information. And 58% of uh, malware attacks are targeted to small businesses. And given the fact that our, our economy in South Africa is mainly focused on, actually main, our backbone economy is, uh, is uh, small businesses, just think of the bad things that could happen to, to our small businesses if we, these attacks increases. But there is always a solution to this. And so there is the approaches to malware detection. So pre-execution, right, first. So data is anything you can tell about a file without executing it. This may include ex executable file, format descriptions, code descriptions, binary, data statistics, text strings, and information extracted via code em emulation and other similar data. Post-execution, first data conveys information about behavior or events caused by process activity in a system. Right. Right, so with uh, malware, malware classification methods being used, uh, these are the malware classification methods being used currently, intrusion prevention systems, having the ability to intercept the direct line of communications between the source and destination automat automatically act on detect anomalies. Encryption, securing the data itself by encrypting it and uh, Hanipose is our aim to learn uh, at learning about attack methodologies and gathering forensic information for performing analysis the, on the attacker's actions. Right. So for malware detection, there are two categories, right? And uh, it is banned and malicious, right, files, which is uh, those two on top. Then you get to train your data and you, you, you get the predictive model, right? Uh, Mayor uh, recognition models decides if an object is a threat, right? Based on the data they coll they've collected before or on it. Uh, this can be, this actually, this data can, can be collected when, when you have been attacked or before the attack. So we are just using the data that, that we have at the moment. Machine learning boosts uh, malware detection using various kinds of data on host, network, and cloud-based anti-malware components. And so uh, this is actually incoming stream clustering, and you can 
cluster out your data, you, sorry, you can use clustering, right, which can be support vector machine or any clustering method, machine learning methods, right. So you get to see that incoming stream of uh, unknown already classified objects, that's when our, where our data is coming in, then we classify our data, or sorry, we cluster our data. Then you get to see the point one, point two, and point three, and then there's the human annotation of part of it. But uh, with, with, with clustering, it, it, all, it all depends with, uh, with, the, with the model that, we, I mean, the algorithm that you use, but uh, I would actually, sometimes it, it all depends with, uh, I think with the algorithms, with a support vector machine, right, is one of the best algorithms that you can use, but there are some limitations to that as well. And uh, so with uh, what machine algorithm, uh, machine learning algorithm uh, can you select? So, so these are the questions that you need to ask before you implement any machine learning. Sorry about that. So these are the questions that you need to ask uh, the companies or that you get to ask first before you, you implement NML. So what is the size of your training data set? Because some, some of the algorithms work better with small data sets and some of the algorithms work with bigger data sets, right? And for example, dimension reduction or dimension reduction, there's an algorithm called TISNI, right? And there's an algorithm called uh, uh, SVM as well, right? If you apply TISNI on uh, bigger algorithms for the dimension reduction, it's, it works well, but if you, for the others, it doesn't. And uh, the other thing is, are you predicting a, sim sim a samples category or a quantitative value? Uh, do you have labeled data or you do not have labeled data? If yes, how much labeled data do you have, right? Do you know the number of results, result categories? How much time and resources do you have to train the model? How much time and resources do you have, do you have to make predictions, right? So these are, these, are, these are some of the questions that you should ask uh, yourself when, when faced with the machine learning algorithm selection, right? And what are the advantages now of using AI or ML? So with artificial intelligence and machine learning, it can handle large volumes of activities that takes place across the a company's network and massive email files and websites access by employees in a small fraction of the time needed by humans. Machine learning or an AI can help learn over time. You can identify malicious attacks based on the behavior of applications and the behavior of the network as a whole. AI and ML that identifies unknown threats. Hundreds of millions of malicious attacks are launched every year, right? And what are the potential limits, limitations of applying AI as well? Cyber threats are constantly evolving, right? And bad attackers are creative as well and have visually limited resources. As new threats are emerged, security solutions that use AI, you have to be trained in order to keep up, right? So you need to constantly train your data sets or your models as well. And the other, the other challenge that we're having is that the bad guys are now using AI as well, which is uh, quite crazy. And they are now actually even training their data set as well. But uh, AI systems are not yet advanced enough to be 100% accurate, right? And the other thing is uh, with AI is the false positives, right? So with AI system, you can never, sometimes you get 100% accurate. There is actually a research that was done recently with uh, F-Secure, with uh, where they're using capture, but, uh, and it's actually 100%, but you can never get to, to that point, right? But uh, the, the biggest challenge that we have is the false positive in the, in the AI sector, and that is one of the limitations. So what are the key takeaway points? Combine data science, data science and cybersecurity. The other thing is the domain knowledge is key, 
right? Understand your data sets, what, what the data mining part of it as well. How do we harvest data from, and get to understand that, do we get, do we use our log for login files? What, what, what kind of uh, data sets or information that we need to, to put in our data sets? Understand theoretical machine learning and how to apply it into, into cybersecurity as well. False positive is a big challenge, right? And that's the biggest challenge in the, of applying AI, deep learning or machine learning and that needs to be actually looked at. And have the right data set, that is, this is the fuel of machine learning, right? And yes, thank you. Okay, so with overfitting, it's, it, are, you, are you talking about the outliers that I mentioned? Okay, let me go. Could you maybe just repeat the question, please, for the microphone? Oh, okay. So she said, what is overfitting? And let me check on the slide first. Okay, so with overfitting, it's actually going beyond. Or let me put it in. Let me give an example of outliers, right? So I don't know how familiar where you are with statistics, but <laughs> okay, okay. So it's just the abnormality, all right, or anything that goes beyond the norm. Yeah. In, yeah. Or, oh, so with positive, false positive is something that is acting as if it is the correct thing, but it's the bad thing, yeah. right? So for example, we are, we are thinking, because when attackers attack, they act as if, they attack in a way where they act like it's normal traffic, whereas it's bad traffic, right? For, for example, a DDoS attack. Yeah. Any question? Yeah. A, a solution that's not active monitoring. So you're talking about um, predicting, uh, predicting anomalies, and obviously that can go into phishing and people trying to uh, hack into the network. And you create decision trees based on applications that are being uh, open, and that applications are moving from one to another to another, right? So how would you process the data? How do you actually build the data? Okay, so you mean on runtime data? Yeah. Uh, that can be that can be implemented, but then there is uh, there's there's a challenge on that on that one, and uh, there are some limitations as well. But it all depends where where and what kind of data you're talking about. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, maybe someone trying to hack into the network. How would you be able to detect um, where or how they're busy going from one privileged user to another? How, how do you Okay. Uh, there are many ways we can, you can do you can do that, but uh, it all, it all depends. If so, for example, are you talking about the t the, the slide with the time series? Uh, well, I mean, it would be time series, but you'd have to combine time series with um, other stuff, other analysis, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it can be you, you can use uh, time series, but like I said, there are limitations as well because. Uh, is this with, with applying AI or ML, it's not 100% accurate. And especially like on real, 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 runtime data, it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, not true. But, but if, if, for example, with Amazon, right? Uh, actually, there's a good company actually, so I can't remember the name. But what they are doing is for any abnormal traffic, right? They just shout down one server and uh, pull up the other one, right? But using, uh, using ML as well. But for that specifically, it can be a challenge, but it's, that's the problem with the uh, with, uh, time series. Yeah. Unless if you, if you combine some other algorithms with that as well. Any other question? <coughs>
Yeah. Can you give us a, the most interesting real life yeah. example of the application of machine learning yeah. for information security that, that mm. you know that you know digestible mm. for us one not number crunch? Okay. So without necessarily diving into the details of algorithms, etc., yeah. what was the nature of the threat and mm. how did machine learning actually help? Okay. Uh, there are many, many examples. Your favorite, favorite. <laughs> my, my favorite. I think, I think the DDoS attack, right, with, uh, with the servers, right, mitigating or, or detecting abnormal traffic, right. So there's a site, I can't really remember the site, right, but uh, the site, with, with the site they actually implemented, it was actually just checking Actually, it was a time series as well, time series thing, and they were looking. They were just looking at the traffic, right, and the variations and all as well, seasonal variations. And the problem there, it was actually the nation, right. So, so for for for, for different countries, we get, we get different holidays and all these other things, and they didn't know that from that country there was actually a holiday. And just for example, in America, they buy pumpkins in, because of Halloween uh, at a certain period. And with this side, it was actually another country. And when the traffic went up, they detected it as an uh, anomaly detection, right? And it went down, it picked up another server, which is something that I was just talking about. But they actually, on that, on that same, or with, I think uh, after three hours or so, I can't really remember, but after three hours or so, they picked up that the guys were trying to, to, to get into uh, to the system as well. But they were applying ML as well. 